Hi everyone. Today I wanted to show you a simple exercise for those of you who always feel like you're rocking or shifting or floating or swimming, a little bit off balance, a little bit dizzy after post-concussion. Uh, I want to point out that the number one cause of dizziness post-concussion uh, is reported to be migraine and then uh, inner ear crystals are common also and there are many other causes of dizziness post-concussion. What I'm going to be showing you is how to kind of reweigh your senses. Uh, so uh, a mindfulness exercise on what's called sensory integration or sensory uh, organization. And what this is, is basically uh, taking, um, if you look at postural control like a recipe that you have, and the ingredients of that recipe are your somatosensory system. So that is the system that you feel when you feel the weight over your hips, over your feet, you feel the tension in your muscles, you feel uh, stretch in, in skin and things like that, that's your somatosensory system. So if you were to imagine that you're, out of, that you're in outer space, so your vestibular system is now offline and your eyes are closed, so your visual system's offline, and if someone were to move your arm, that would, you would still be able to tell because your somatosensory system is telling you so. That's one ingredient. This mindfulness exercise wants, us, wants you to become aware of that ingredient. And once you can name it, then you can tame it. Once you can feel it, then you can heal it. And so uh, the second system we want you to become aware of is your vestibular system. And now all of these ingredients are all kind of mixed in together, so you kind of have to feel them. And we're going to kind of rig the situation in a way where you can kind of accentuate one or remove one and then notice the difference in the postural control recipe. And the third thing we're going to be influencing is the visual ingredient. So three ingredients, somatosensory, vestibular, and visual. And the fourth major ingredient that we didn't really talk about yet, but that is your belief system. So if I was a gymnast, I would believe that I could do flips. It's kind of like that muscle memory it's uh, if you can see it, then you can then you can do it type attitude. So uh, sometimes when um, we're doing these exercises, we start getting really anxious or sweaty or nervous, and a lot of that has to do because the same areas in the brain that process anxiety are the ones that process dizziness. So uh, dizziness and anxiety kind of go hand in hand, and the, it's kind of like the circuitry gets hijacked. And a lot of people when they get dizzy, um, when they uh, they get nervous also, they start feeling guilty about the fact that they're getting nervous and that actually just makes the problem worse once they understand that it's not really their fault, it's not like they're doing it to themselves, it's, it's, it's kind of like a hijacking. Then if you become aware of it and, and kind of use some strategies, either breathing or just not telling yourself, you know, well, snap out of it, that can make a big difference in trying to retrain, rewire all that. So. Uh, now I'm going to show you some simple exercises. So, uh, first thing to do is uh, stand the way Mo showed you in a previous video. See the link below. And um, become aware of your sway. So, um, I'm just going to stand like this. And I'm going to stand. I notice I'm not swaying that much, but you might be swaying a bit. And then if you were to remove the visual ingredient, you would all of a sudden notice more sway. Now for me, so for me, uh, I don't feel much sway yet, so I'm gonna stand like this. For that's a bit harder. And I'm gonna feel some sway. And I wanna point out, I'll point out something in a second. So I'm feeling the sway. Now I can try to fight it and try to stabilize myself. But that's kind of going against the grain. We want to go with the grain. So the way to go with the grain is the way Mo showed you. One way is if you can see that as chatter, that sway, you just want to kind of talk over that chatter with your own chatter. And so you just create your own sway and you can create it from the ankles, although that's less effective as Mo mentioned. You can also create it from the knees, but that's less effective too. 
generally in sports or in balance or any kind of movement, the most effective way to get anything done is to use your core. Like that, you kind of tap into your somatosensory system the most. You claim the most real estate in your recipe for the somatosensory system. And the name of the game in post-concussion somatosensory organization, I'm sorry, sensory organization, is for most people, we want to take away from the visual system because we're using too much of that ingredient. That's something that children do. And after around the age seven and a half, we move away from that. So what I'm doing is I'm really recruiting my, my core, using my hips, feeling my feet really grounded, thrusting my weight into my feet so that my feet are always kind of in contact and I'm drowning out that sweat. And I just keep going and going until I get it. And what you'll notice is as you slowly kind of rock it back down to stability, then you're a lot more stable. And then if you still struggle, then you can open your eyes and use it as, a, as like a set or someone to kind of like spot you. And internally, I want you to throw your attention back onto your muscles because ultimately, even though your eyes are helping, it's your muscles that are keeping you up. And so if you really pay attention to what your muscles are doing in this recipe right now, and then you remove the visual ingredient, you can stay with it for a while until you kind of lose attention or focus or the feel, but you do it more and more and it gets kind of wired in. And what you're doing is in your brain, you're slowly reclaiming those circuits in, the, in, in your postural control recipe in a more advanta advantageous type recipe. So more, less visual, more vestibular, more somatosensory. So, okay, so now we know how to remove the visual system and how to accentuate the other ones. Now, how do you kind of feel what the somatosensory system is bringing to the table? So we kind of showed it to you already. Mo mentioned the wider your stance is, the more, the, the more somatosensory ingredient, the narrower, the less somatosensory information, less somatosensory information. And if I bring like a cushion or a basso ball, basso ball, even less somatosensory information. Now I'm using a lot more of my vestibular system because it feels a little head rocking and movement and it's automatically sending signals to the rest of my body because it's, sent, it's like a gyroscope, like the one you have in your phone that tells you when you're moving the camera or moving the phone and adjust the screen accordingly. So it's doing the same thing. And like that, you start to train how to feed off that vestibular ingredient and integrate that into your recipe. So now I have less somatosensory ingredient. I close my eyes, I got less visual ingredient. And now I got to rely on my vestibular system. And then you can even go, go on one leg. You can add neck turns while you're doing the activity. Those are all things that are removing somatosensory sense and challenging your system and increasing vestibular ingredients. And uh, the important thing here is not getting it done, it's how you're getting it done. Doing it in a spirit of relaxation and mindfulness. Like a child, when they first start toddling, they have no judgment of what falling is gonna be like or uh, what the ground is gonna feel like. And if you can try to recreate that, obviously in a safe environment, then um, you're more likely to successfully reintegrate the senses in the way you like. Um, being on a mat like this, a red mat like this, is softer, so it's actually more challenging because you get less somatosensory information than on a hard ground. So those are some strategies you can start practicing right now, even while making tea in the morning or while, while you're standing in the kitchen for a minute or two peppering out this kind of mindfulness exercise throughout the day, checking in with your postural control, checking in with what the somatosensory system is bringing to your recipe, your vestibular system is bringing to the recipe, and your visual system. Uh, your team will give you a lot more exercises to build on this, and then they'll be building visual type exercises, spatial awareness type stuff, coordination type stuff, and then your ability to resist kind of getting uh, hijacked again by complicated and disturbing visual images like you know, striped umbrellas and stripes going across your screen and busy camera videos. You know, if you can kind of stay with the recipe that you like in the face of those kind of stimulus, uh, that's gonna be one step closer to your recovery and where you wanna get. <laughs>